Yeah, we're here to relay our experiences on rotations and hopefully get you really excited for the upcoming year that you've got going on. Um, so I'm Danny. I'm one of the um, Beaver Med Year 5 course reps and the track that I did were neurology, ophthalmology, um, derm and shelter. Hi, um, I'm Abby. I'm another one of the BVET Med, Med, Med 5 course reps. Um, I also did small news track, so I did cardiology and critical care, neurology, and then I've got Acorn House coming up. I'm Caitlin, and I'm also a BVET Med 5 rep. Um, I did all small news track as well. Um, I did neurology, cardiocritical care, and oncology. And we just wanted to uh, start it off with this fantastic photo that it took a while to find on Facebook um, because we think it's really lovely and it's a great reminder of your year group and how close you all are together. So yeah, we'll get started. So I just added this in um, just to remind you that um, a lot of this information will be online, so you don't need to panic. Um, this isn't a normal lecture where you get your laptops out. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, if you need to go find information, it will be there and learn. This presentation will be sent to you afterwards um, by us reps. So again, just eat your pizza, enjoy it, and then we'll send that information at a later date when you're thinking of rotations. Um, and we just wanted to hope that everyone's form Tivoskis went well. We remember what it was like last year, so yeah. <laughs> oh, and just to add, we split it into core rotations and track rotations. So we'll start with all the core rotations, and then we'll go to the tracks. And at the end, if you have any questions, you can just ask us because... Uh, we're still in rotations um, and we will overlap with you due to the changes that we had with COVID. Um, you will see us around. So, yeah, ask us any questions. So, to start off with, we've got anesthesia. <laughs> um, it's a two week rotation in the QMH. Or oh, I'll also add in if the animal at the top is like a dark blue, that basically means that that animal is included within that rotation, just to kind of orientate you what to expect. Um, uh, so anesthesia, yeah, you'll do two weeks in the QMH. You'll also be in the equine referral hospital if you're with um, equine anesthesia. Um, but basically the hours are around 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, you'll have a coordinator board on the screens in the QMH and you'll be able to see what surgeries are scheduled for that day. So um, the coordinators will contact you to um, basically put down a name per case. Um, if there's not enough cases per students, that's fine. Um, you can multiple students per case, but they do prefer you to get your own experiences and showcase your skills at some point. So try and get a case by yourself to really prove to them that um, you've learned a lot through the rotation. Um, you'll have weekend shifts and you will have on-call shifts. So if you start with anesthesia, it's a really good learning curve for getting around the QMH and training your body clock to wake up at whatever time. Um, and... Things to revise would probably mainly be drugs. They're going to ask you a lot about the drugs. Um, so you'll have that operation slash surgery booked in. Um, and you'll have to make up a pre-medication plan. Um, so knowing what drugs you want to use and the dosages, they will ask you about that. Also the anaesthetic circuits and any local blocks you might want to use. Um, capnography and the max. So there's quite a lot to know, but it's all in the lecture notes. So you just got to go back and and have a listen um, and I put red tray in there <laughs> so there's a red tray that you've got to make up before every procedure um, if you don't put the name of the patient on it they're not going to use it so really do put your name on it um, otherwise you've made all that up for nothing and you get quite upset in the morning when it's just sitting there <laughs> um, and then yeah we've just added some quotes from students on the right hand side um, just explaining basically you can look back when we send the slides to you, but just explaining how they found the rotation um, and what you should keep an eye out for when you're on the rotation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and so next we have um, emergency, which is another call. Um, this is only one week, uh, but it's a really good week, I would say. Um, so basically it's split into four 12 hour shifts. Um, so those are, as you can see, like six till six, eight till eight, 12 till 12, or four till four. Um, and as I said, you do four of these, and you must do a weekend shift as well. That's another one of the um, requirements, but there's no on call, so you just do your four shifts. Um, it can be really tiring because 12 hours is quite a long time, um, so make sure you pack a lot of snacks. Uh, the four till four, like it sounds horrible, but actually it's probably one of the best shifts because it's out of hours, so you do tend to see a lot more. Um, so kind of just go in with an open mind and try and really enjoy it. 
uh, what to revise, um, so like your major body systems assessment, so kind of how you triage your patient, things like fluid therapy, because obviously they use that a lot for um, inpatients and kind of stabilising critical patients, things like CPR, so like on the first day you'll all have a CPR practical, um, so that was sort of going through kind of the, the different roles within the CPR and what to do if kind of uh, an emergency critical patient comes in. Um, types of shock, they love quiz you on the different types of shock, so make sure that you know the different types and how you treat them. Uh, so poker, so kind of learning your like, A-fast and your T-fast and the different zones that you'd have a look at. Um, basic triage and history taking, because the main thing that you'll be doing on that rotation is when the patients come in, you'll be going to take the history and triaging the patient. Um, so yeah, so that's, and then yeah, consulting, so basically your sort of main history taking and everything, but trying to get like a capsule history, especially if it's kind of a critical patient that's come in. Um, so dress code, QMH, sort of general attire, um, you have daily rounds, so I think they're at three, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, four, yeah. Four. three or four. So yeah, so basically you have to go to, um, I think three across the week, um, and these are really good. They're like teaching seminars, so they'll kind of go over main kind of um, emergency presentations and things like that. It's a really good one for EDOPS as well, things like Doppler, um, IV catheter placement, blood sampling, hand wash. Um, because it's like mostly a first opinion service, you'll be doing a lot with the interns and they're really great for, and the nurses, and both of those are really great for um, helping you out with EDOPS. Um, so like, as you can see from the sort of uh, feedback we've got from that, like everyone really likes it because it's quite a good first opinion one um, because it's like out of hours, it's a lot of emergency work as well. Um, a good tip on there is that obviously because you are working sort of slightly awkward shift hours to so make sure that you've got a way home if you don't kind of drive. Uh, but yeah, overall a really good rotation. Um, so next is small animal medicine. So this is from about 7.30 in the morning until 5 p.m. You do have to come in on the weekends, um, but there's no on call, which is pretty nice. Um, it is a two week rotation um, and it basically is any of your common um, like internal medicine problems. Um, so like you get anemia, IBD, CKD, you get a huge range of experience with kind of what you will see in um, general practice, which is great. Um, the team really wants you to get stuck in so you get to be involved in absolutely everything that your patient does. Um, you get assigned specific patients that you take from consult until you discharge them. So it's really nice because you know your cases super well um, and you kind of get to be involved in absolutely everything that happens with them. It's a really great time to practice your history taking um, as you will be doing your consultations there. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for practical skills as well. You get to do, you know, blood pressures, IVs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that everyone would say that it's a hard rotation. You definitely have to read up on your cases, um, but you get out what you put in. And so it definitely is something that I would recommend putting yourself into and um, really getting stuck in with that. <laughs> So then we have diagnostic imaging. It's actually just a one week rotation um, and you're again um, in the QMH and the Equine Referral Hospital. Um, the hours are quite nice. It's 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and there's no weekend shifts, on call shifts, no walkouts. So it's quite a nice one um, for sitting down and reviewing a lot of imaging. Um, revision wise you're going to really want to look at your equine distal limb anatomy beforehand i had a really busy um rotation block before and i thought oh i'll be fine i'll remember loads but um i definitely didn't and i definitely learned my lesson um so someone commented saying um what anatomy textbook is really good to use um and is handy to look at beforehand um and you're also going to be looking at um imaging in the qmh so you'll be shadowing the diagnostic imaging service you'll be standing there listening to what they're doing and watching them take samples so again it's good to um have a read up in advance of what sampling methods are used um, but yeah, it's mainly online and then there's a few sessions in person. The best feedback that this rotation gets is regards to the OSCE practice because you really do get to practice and you have a lot of time and then they let you practice again the next day. So um, really do utilise that because um, OSCEs come around a lot quicker than you think. 
Uh, yeah, so next we have Blue Cross, uh, which is also another one-week um, rotation. So this is basically primarily consulting. It's at the uh, Blue Cross Hospital of Victoria. Um, so kind of what to revise, things like uh, vaccines, parasite treatment, antimicrobials, just kind of general first opinion sort of presentations. Um, so as I said, you're doing consults, basically. So you'll be kind of in groups of um, three or four, depending on the size of your rotation group. So you usually kind of rotate between one person doing the history, one person doing the physical, and then one person writing the notes. Um, you get to sort of a of vaccinations and any medications and things and you have like a bit out the back that you can like discuss everything with before sort of doing this so it's kind of a nice balance of feeling like you're doing it for yourself but also knowing you've got that support um the hours are really nice it's 10 till 5 there's no weekends on, or on call um there's no sort of formal rounds but you get to see a lot of kind of common presentations so you kind of still feel like you're learning quite a lot um, a feedback that we've had from this is that uh, it really builds your confidence and your sort of decision making skills because you really feel like you're kind of being the vet um, and there is also a day from home to do a uh, home study as well which you like have to complete to pass the rotation so just be aware of that um, but yeah overall like a really good rotation um, next is Beaumont um, so you are Yours is going to be a little bit different than ours. Um, you have one week of exotics and then two weeks of kind of general small animal practice, which is different from ours. Um, you guys will generally be doing shift work, so you have an early and a late, um, and you will be in on the weekends, but there's no on call and there are no walkouts, um, which as a QMH student, you get very used to having walkouts all the time. Um, so the like big things to focus on is vaccines, parasite treatment, um, and primary approach to common disorders. This is basically your general practice. Um, so you have consults, you have theater days, um, you get to work with exotics, which is a super exciting time because you don't really get much experience with that outside of this rotation, unless you go find it yourself, which you obviously can do, but this is a great time to kind of have that support. Um, then um, the feedback we got is just you learn how to be really efficient in these consults um, and taking notes. You, you know, that's the big thing is just kind of starting to get your process down. And this is a really good opportunity to learn how to do that um, and how that all goes. Um, and basically that you um, get to kind of again, be the vet in this case, you get to make the decisions um, and then you go and talk to your senior vet behind the scenes. So you get to really be upfront and talking to your clients and making decisions, which is super nice. And then next we have shelter medicine call. So you'll have a track option and a core option. Everyone does the shelter medicine call. So the location is split amongst a um, few places. So you have the RSPCA in Finsbury Park, um, a VPH day, which is here on campus. And um, there's also a cat foster unit in Enfield um, and three virtual working from home days. So it's quite a nice one, actually. You feel like you're kind of in a few different places. Um, so it's really exciting. It's a really popular core rotation. Everyone loves it, especially because you get a lot of um, surgical neutering experience. Um, and also you get to really hone in on your preventative health care routines um, and dentals as well as kitten checks. So it's kind of very similar to what you'll be experiencing as a first opinion new grad. Um, you also have a bit of VPH in there. So um, it's good to look at some breed specific legislation, dental charting and nerve blocks ahead of time. Um, in regards to the dress code, um, wear your blue scrubs. Quite a few rotations, including Beaumont, like you to change when you get there um, as a biosecurity Point. So um, just bear that in mind, pack your scrubs ahead of time because when you're in the morning and you're rushing to get the train, it can be easy to forget. Um, and a lot of core rotations, you'll find that, that you might not have the opportunity to practice EDOPS. So do plan ahead and think about what rotations you want to practice them on um, because you don't want to be emailing Dan later on in the year to say you haven't done any of them. Um, so that's just a big tip. Um, and yeah, uh, just the feedback's great. It's really practical. Um, so you have your first opinion consults for like Beaumont, and then this one you can really focus on sort of like your shelter medicine procedures. Um, and the time limit is because it's a charity and they've got to really limit that time. They can't let students be doing them for two hours. It's not because they think you have to be doing it in 15 minutes. So don't take that as a personal reflection. That's just to standardize it. Um, but really do think about what you want to practice because I found that I never get to make the first incision. So when I did shelter, I really wanted to practice that because then I wasn't so nervous about starting my um, operations anymore. 
Uh, yeah, so next we have um, pathology and veterinary public health. Uh, this is based uh, at the labs at Hawkshead. It's a two-week rotation. Um, the hours are sort of nine to five, so pretty standard. There's no weekend or on-call or anything like that. Um, kind of key things to revise, um, because you'll be doing a lot of post-mortems and things, are like lesion description, um, kind of step-by-step -step how to do a dissection, things like blood smear, uh, post-mortem etiquette. So there's a, like a clinical pathology week and an anatomical pathology week. So depending on which week you're on at which time, you'll be doing things like blood smear, smear and uh, microscopy, post-mortems, uh, and there's also a case presentation at the end. Um, and you also have to do the body trolley collections from uh, the QMH, I think, a few times a week as well. Uh, so the dress code, so you don't have to dress up fancy or anything like you normally do, um, but yeah, just PPE and stuff for the pathology room. Uh, they actually have designated days for getting your blood smear and microscopy EDOPs done on this rotation, which is really good. Uh, so the feedback we've had is people said it's quite a relaxed week, but it's really good for practicing your um, microscopy and your sort of pathology skills. Um, and make sure that you share the body trolley collection equally. So two people is best, as it can be hard to move at times when it's a little bit heavy. Um, so yeah. Um, next, we have Endel. So this one is going to be a rotation that is away from Potter's Bar, which is always a fun time. Um, you do have to get out there yourself, um, so it's good to kind of keep in mind like who might be driving and arranging that ahead of time. Um, generally, the hours are about 8 to 5 p.m. Um, the uh, Commute can sometimes be a bit long to some of the farms, um, so it's really important to do all of your pre-reading the night before so you're not trying to do it in the car the next morning. Um, you have scheduled seminars and teaching sessions on basically any farm topic that you could want, um, and you do get some clinical experience. Um, you are going out to farms that are actually clients of the vet practice, um, and it is super informative, and the teaching there is great. Um, they are super passionate about making sure that you guys know what you need to know. Um, dress code is, there's not really one for the teaching sessions, but kind of smart-ish. If you have an RVC polo, um, that's a great option. On farm, you just need to wear your waterproofs and your wellies. Um, there are cleaning materials provided there, so don't worry about having to clean your stuff. They have that all there for you. Um, it is accommodation that's provided for you. Um, it is shared rooms, um, and it's, it is quite remote. Um, don't forget to bring sheets and pillows um, and maybe some extra pillows and blankets in the winter because it does get cold. Um, it is a really good mix of that classroom and practical teaching out on the farms um, and make sure that you account for traffic on the Monday because you can be late and that's never fun. <laughs> And then this is the other core farm rotation, which is Synergy. I must note the alpaca wasn't going blue for some reason, so I don't know why, but it is included. <laughs> it's just purple. Um, but yeah, this is Synergy. This is in Dorchester at Kingston Morwood College. Um, again, the farm rotations are really popular because you'll get to kind of go somewhere else, um, live out of the house for a couple of weeks and bond, which is really nice. Um, so the hours, again, are really nice, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. They have recently refurbished a brand-new building on the campus, so you get to go in these brand-new classrooms. I think our group were the first ones to go in there, so they were, the builders were working around us, but it wasn't noisy. It was fine. Um, there's no weekend shifts and no one calls, so once you've done your hours, you can just go and have fun. Um, we had, like, a little afternoon tea by the lake. Um, it was really nice, so just, like, make the most of the rotation um, because these rotations are obviously great for learning, but you also want to bond as a group um, and have some fun um, so yeah we really want you to um, think about the pre-reading in advance because they will ask you about the pre-reading and there is a lot we're not gonna sugarcoat it and there is a lot of pre-reading um, because all of your farm core is condensed into four weeks so if you think about how much you've got to cover um, so just think about that in advance because if you've got a busy rotation the week before you don't want to be leaving it to the night before um, but yeah, having a thinking about um, having a think about all of the biosecurity, fertility, um, the business aspect, um, therapeutics, mastitis, um, and then you do some really fun practicals as like a day with alpacas.
alpacas where you get to go to an alpaca stud farm it's just really cool um and there's a really good foot trimming practical there is an abattoir day um and you will have to wake up at like 4 a.m for it because you've got to travel all the way to bristol so do be prepared for that um and a lot of people worry about the abattoir day but actually it's really supportive and they're used to having students there and um, because it's a university abattoir so they're really good at talking you through it and being there if you get a bit upset but on the whole, um, it's a really fun rotation. Um, and yeah, there's lovely places to go. Um, someone added in Cafe Yegos. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, you can go to the beach, you can go out, um, you can have some fun, which is the good thing about these rotations. Okay, uh, moving on to equine. So we've got equine one, um, which is at, based at the equine referral hospital, referral hospital here. Um, so this is another two week rotation. So you have one week of ambulatory, which will either be made up of three days um, with the ambulatory team uh, or two days and a day at the horse trust. Uh, and then this following week or the preceding week, depending on which way around, will be um, surgery. So it's kind of mainly like orthopedics and things like that. Um, so for the hours, uh, it's 7 a.m. to sort of 4 p.m. when you're at the hospital and though about the same but sort of depends on what the vet is doing that day so you kind of message them the night before uh, see what time you need to be there and everything um, there is a weekend shift so you do have to do a Sunday when you're on your hospital week but there's no one call um, so things to revise so on the first day you'll have kind of an introductory session in the clinical skills center which is really good for sort of practicing your um, practical skills uh, things like and um, revising things like surgical colic, dental extractions, lameness workups, distal limb anatomy. Um, definitely revise your distal limb nerve blocks and kind of distal limb anatomy because they love to quiz you on that. Um, so sort of expectations. Yeah, when you're on your ambulatory week, you'll shadow the ambo there and kind of assist them with whatever they've got uh, in the diary that day. Things like X-rays, medications, vaccines. It's kind of really varied on what they're doing that day. Um, if they do have surgeries uh, when you're on your surgery week, you have the opportunity to scrub into those. Um, daily patient soaps in the morning. Um, that's kind of for all equine rotations. Uh, dress code, so boiler suit, uh, sensible wellies. I think they usually like you to wear steel toe caps uh, and then bring your blue scrubs if uh, you're going into theatre. Um, they have rounds in the morning, which are more like patient rounds than anything else. Um, E-dops, uh, gloving and gowning, question mark. <laughs> um, IV catheter placement, uh, blood sampling, because you can do those like on the juggler on horse. Uh, feedback for this, um, like as people have said it's quite variable with what you do depending on who you're going out with and what they've got in the diary that day um, if you are really interested in ambulatory it's probably advisable also to do some ems just because you only get two or three days um depending on whether you're going to the horse trust or not um like a lot of people really like the horse trust um because you get to do like a lot of practical skills there um nikki who runs it is really nice um but you also do have to drive to that but they refund petrol which is good <laughs> Uh, next is Equine Hospital 2. So this is also at the Equine Hospital here at Hawkshead Campus. Um, general hours, oh, sorry. You spend one week on medicine and one week on nights. Um, so medicine is generally 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. with 6 p.m. checks and everyone works on the Saturday. And then on nights, you work four 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. shifts. Um, Generally, you're looking at uh, colic, gastric ulcers, corneal ulcers, uveitis, and toxins. Um, and the general expectations are you have daily or nightly, depending, soaps of your patients and hourly checks. Um, so your hourly checks are kind of generally, you could give oral meds, you might be doing colic checks, feeds, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you'll get to watch procedures, especially doing scopes and ultrasound scans. Um, this as well, you'll be wearing your boiler suit and sensible wellies for the hospital. Again, there are rounds every day, but they're patient rounds, um, and you kind of just get to come and listen and kind of understand what's happening with the patients that are in the hospital each day. Um, People have said that if it's quiet, um, the staff are super great at giving teaching seminars. Um, so it's also a good idea to revise for those. Um, you work really closely with the interns, so definitely get to know them um, and reach out to them because they are super great resources for you. Um, they are long shifts, but they do go quickly and can be super fun, especially when you make an effort with your group. Um, and it's great for practicing your equine physical exams, um, similar to farm you only really get these four weeks unless you make an effort outside for tracking or ems so really make the most of this time 
And so, yeah, that's all of your core. <laughs> so it goes very, very quickly. You may think we've been standing here chatting for quite a while and you just want to get on with it. But um, actually, the core goes so quick that you can't believe you've done all of your core rotations, say, in the QMH, Equine Hospital, on farm. Um, so, yeah, your track is great on top of that. So we'll go through all the track options. Soft tissue surgery has actually just moved to track only. We've done that all as core, and you could also pick it as track. Um, but you'll be able to do this as a two-week tracking option for anyone who's picked it. So you'll be in the QMH again. Hours, um, 7 a.m. to around 5 to 6.30. Um, it basically depends on round start, and it's quite a notorious service for having rounds really late. Um, so you're kind of sitting around in the student room waiting to find out where rounds are, and then they basher it, and then you're done. Uh, but it can be hours sometimes, so bear that in mind. Uh, you do have weekend shifts, you are on call, there are walkouts, so again, just be prepared for kind of a really full-on day, uh, or shall I say a couple of weeks, um, and you might be quite knackered by the end of it. Um, definitely revise your surgical instruments. I went into my soft tissue core kind of not really thinking about the instruments aspect, and we were quizzed, and when you're in surgery and they ask you to hand them something and you don't know what it is it's quite embarrassing um and then also look at your suture material and what you're going to use for each layer um the suture patterns and also just um commonly presenting referral surgery so things like boas you see a lot of brachies in the qmh so bear that in mind um, and a lot of mass excisions um in terms of expectations, there'll be a lot of consults. You'll also be calling the clients. So if you've never really had to do that before, it can be quite a shock. Um, if you've never really consulted with an owner or if you've never called an owner to update them. But um, don't worry, you'll be told what to say over the phone. But sometimes it's worth bearing in mind tell, asking the um, internal resident if there's anything they don't want you to say to the owner. Um, because sometimes we don't know what we shouldn't say and what we should say. Um, and there's also a really good gut suturing practical, which I'm not sure if you guys will have, but you get to practice um, like an intro to me. Um, and yeah, uh, daily rounds, EDOPS wise, um, it can be quite variable when to practice them. And just bear in mind, if you're doing gloving and gowning, you might not have the opportunity to do this on a lot of rotations. So this would be a really good one to utilize it on because you'll be in a lot of surgeries. Um, and they can be really long. So don't underestimate how tired you might get or how dizzy you might get, even if you never have before. Um, referral surgeries can be a lot longer than, say, your first opinion EMS ones. Um, so just have lots of snacks with you. And if you need to have a break, just be honest with them because they understand. They'd much rather you were honest than fainted on the patient. Um, and yeah, you might be expected to speak in rounds, so again, expect that, read up on your case and make sure you have an update in place and also go check on them during the day and in their recovery period because um, they'll want to know, even if they know themselves, they're going to want to make sure that you're keeping yourself in the loop with it all. Okay, uh, next we have cardiology. Uh, so this is another track that's in the QMH. Uh, it's one week because it's paired with uh, critical care. Uh, the hours are really nice for this, nine to five. Um, it's also a three-day week. There's no weekends, uh, but you are on call at the weekend, although it says unlikely to be called. I was called, so take that with a pinch of salt. <laughs> um, what to revise, so kind of the ACVIM consensus guidelines um, for kind of just diagnosing like mitral valve disease in dogs, ECGs, DCM, HCM, all the sort of common presentations of cardiac disease. Um, again, you're expected to present your cases for the coming day at rounds. Um, you watch a lot of imaging. You get really comfortable watching echoes. Um, and also, at the end of the week, uh, quite often they bring in one of the clinician's dog and you get to practice doing an echo, which is really good. Um, depending on how, what you have that week as well, you might also see some ECGs, um, which is really good. And they're really good at talking you through those and everything. Um, there's daily rounds, so you have like patient rounds at 9 a.m. where they kind of discuss what's coming in, uh, and then they'll kind of have like teaching rounds at 5, which are really good um, for sort of going through common like presentations of things and um, discussing different heart murmurs and things. Uh, there's no EDOPS really to do on this, kind of, unless you might be able to put in your cuff term, <laughs> but um, otherwise, no. Uh, so yeah, just kind of make sure you realize different uh, murmurs and kind of like how they correspond to different diseases and things like that. Um, but yeah, you get really good practice kind of listening to, di to different murmurs and things like that and learning kind of what different echoes mean. Um, so yeah, and then yeah, somebody said kind of read papers and things like that. They really appreciate it if you've kind of read up around your um, case, especially if they've got kind of something a bit unusual with them. Um, if you've read up on that, like that, it looks really good. So. Next is critical care. So this is paired with cardiology. This is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. There's no weekend shifts, no on call, and no walkouts, which is lovely. Um, in the big things to focus on, it's similar to ER, except for you are doing the other side. So these are the patients that are 
in hospital in the intensive care unit. Um, so knowing fluid therapy, again, types of shock, CPR, common emergency drugs is a really good thing to revise. Um, generally, day to day, you're just helping the nurses and the residents with patient care and the hourly tasks in the ICU. Um, a lot of times, the patients need care every one to two hours, so it's really good time to basically just kind of hang out in ICU. Um, the interns or the residents and the seniors are really good at doing rounds and seminars kind of daily. Um, you are working in alongside the ER students, so you will also go to the rounds that the ER students are on. Um, but they will also do seminars with you throughout the day. Um, recommend that you get to know the nurses really well. They are such an amazing resource um, and they will want to help you if you want to help them. Um, so definitely if you're on that one, get to know your nurses, know their names, have them know you, um, and they are more than happy to help you and let you do more and more as they learn to trust you and kind of know who you are. Um, again, some of the days can be a bit slow because it really depends on what you have. Each week is so different, um, but it's a really good time to get to know your ER clinicians and have seminars and talk with them about anything that you want to know about because they are very, very knowledgeable. And so then we have neurology, which is a really popular track. Um, I did neurology and I absolutely loved it, but I was so knackered by the end of it. Um, so I did it before Christmas. And uh, if you're doing it around a holiday, bank holidays, anything like that, you're going to have a lot of patience. You tend to have a lot of patience on neuro anyway, but you'll just be prepared to have many patients and bring the best brain power you can bring because um, it was quite intense. But again, I learned so much, so I wouldn't have changed that for the world. Um, so you can be in the QMH, it's two weeks, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But I did stay quite a few hours afterwards sometimes just to prepare my kennel sheets. Um, and also you tend to find that you're on call and have walkouts depending on how many students are on. The more students, the better in terms of how many patients you get to share out. But again, you might not get as much exposure. So there's pros and cons to everything. Um, what to revise, definitely look at your neuro lectures for the five finger rule um, and pretty much every dog will have an IVDD so um, <laughs> just have a look at that um, and also you're going to probably see a hemi a day so um, also have a think about what a hemi is because you will be asked the specifics in the, in the surgery and when you've had I think 12 hemis in and you don't know some of the details they might get a bit upset <laughs> um, but yeah you're going to be doing soaps and walkouts in the morning, don't underestimate how long this can take don't forget your cats in cat ward they obviously won't need a walkout but you'll need to have a look at them I had a really feisty Bengal who I had to change the um, bandage on and do um, check it was flushing well and all the students had forgotten I was in there so I was stuck in there by myself almost had a breakdown because my Bengal was really cheeky so um, just team like teamwork is key um, and yeah you'll have consults again you'll be doing the histories for them um, you'll be doing emergency admits so you might be in the ER a bit as well um, and you'll be scrubbing into surgery. You'll have a daily seminar at 3 p.m. So this is really good for going over any neuro content you want. Um, the, the whole team are amazing and so knowledgeable. So um, you'll really enjoy it if you've picked it. Um, and yeah, it's very busy. Uh, I think I had seven patients on one of my busiest days and you're expected to do the five finger rule during um, rounds for every single one. So you're expected to know exactly what they had coming in and also their progress throughout the week. Um, so just be on it. <laughs> uh, so next we have oncology, which is another two week rotation in the QMH. Um, so the hours are seven till half four, uh, and it does include weekends, um, but no out of hours. In, in, uh, so yes, yeah, just weekends, but no out of hours. Uh, and you don't have to do walkouts of this one either, which is nice. Um, so kind of what to revise, chemotherapy drugs and sort of chemotherapy protocols, common types of cancer and their sort of presentations. Um, the expectation for this rotation would be sort of history taking and examinations of the new patients, assisting with their chemotherapy administration, writing uh, CRIS reports um, and contributing to rounds as well. Um, so they've got daily rounds at sort of quarter past or half past eight. Um, and afternoon teaching rounds as well, which are really beneficial. Uh, EDOPs, like IV catheters, hand wash, blood sampling. Um, so people have said kind of revise the like, lop and chop protocols and get really familiar with reading journals. Um, there's not much practical involvement, um, no surgery on this, but it is very academic in terms of the uh, chemo drugs and protocols. Um, and people have said that you will be quizzed, so kind of make sure that you've read up on these different protocols and you're really kind of aware of uh, what your patient's having done and everything like that. 
Uh, next is ophthalmology. So this is another two-week rotation at the QMH. It's from about 7.45 to 6 p.m. There are weekends, um, but there are no walkouts, and you're just on call on the weekends. Um, just what to revise, the order and steps for the, your ophthalmic exam, um, your normal STT, so sure material test and intraocular pressure values, um, you know, just general revision of your ocular anatomy and like the very common ocular diseases. You'll see a lot of brachycephalic animals on this rotation. Um, so definitely make sure that you revise that. Um, generally, day to day, you're going to be helping the residents with the optho exam in the morning. Um, before rounds, you'll be doing consults. Um, you get some some practical skills, you get to watch surgeries, um, and there are a couple of seminars that you get to go to. Um, generally, they said get involved. Um, you get to do all of the aspects of the exam, um, so you get a lot of experience looking into all different types of eyes with all different types of diseases, um, and it's a very hands-on rotation. Um, make sure that you have a clear idea plan with your group as to who's going to be on what consults and who's going to be going into surgery. Um, and apparently you get a half day each week, which is super exciting. Um, and so make sure to make up for the weekend shift. So just make sure that you know when that's going on. Um, they also said to utilize your seminars as much as possible. Just remember to ask questions. I think that stands for every single rotation at the QMH. They are here to teach you. Make sure that you ha if you have a question, ask it. Um, you do need a lot to write the Chris histories, get really familiar with Chris. Um, it is interesting. <laughs> Don't let them all accumulate overnight because um, the resident might chase you for them. And then we have orthopedics, uh, two week rotation in the QMH again. Um, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with no weekend shifts and no on call and limited walkouts. Um, obviously, it's in the name orthopedics, so it's variable depending on what patients you've got um, but you're really going to want to be looking at your cruciate diseases um, your fracture types and also again revising your um, surgical instruments there are a lot of surgical instruments so this will help you for your soft tissue track if you've picked that as well um, you'll be doing a lot of consults and scrubbing into surgery maybe but you'll also be shadowing in surgery even if you're not scrubbing in you can be in theatre so um, if you don't want to scrub in for every single one, that's great. But if you rock up to theatre and you show them that you're keen, that's still fine. Um, and yeah, you're allowed to scrub into most, but you don't really get to contribute a lot. As you can imagine, they're quite complex surgeries. Um, and it stands for, I said earlier, eat and drink beforehand. You'll get really hungry and thirsty quite quickly. Um, and yeah, it's just the same as a lot of the other rotations in the QMH. Be proactive and be prepared. Uh, and next we have dermatology. Uh, so this is a one-week uh, rotation in the QMH, and it's paired with the shelter track. Um, the hours are sort of uh, 9, 10 to about half 4. Um, it's quite relaxed in terms of uh, hours, no weekend shifts, no one call, and no walkouts. Um, so things to revise, kind of, it's a lot of history taking, um, and it can be a very long history taking process. So kind of revise uh, the sort of things you would usually ask in a sort of routine dermatology consult, um, basic sort of parasitic and oral treatments. Um, you're going to be seeing a lot of itchy dogs. <laughs> so um, there's a few one hour consults a day. So uh, you'll be kind of taking samples, doing microscopic interpretation, things like that. Um, so it's a really good rotation for sort of brushing up on your microscopy. Um, and yeah, you can do like microscope and hand wash EDOPs on this rotation, which is really good. Um, people have said that it's really good for classifying lesions, um, practicing sample collections, and uh, how to treat common conditions as well. Um, so basically, it's, people have said it's a really good one for first opinion, because obviously you see a lot of skin conditions in first opinion, um, and it can be really good for kind of learning how best to treat these things. Um, but on the downside, some people said it can be quite slow um, on some days, uh, because there aren't really any admits or walkouts. But. Otherwise, it's quite good for sort of learning common first opinion presentations. So next is shelter tracking, um, and this one is away from the QMH. Um, and generally, it's 8 a.m. to about 4 or 5, 8.30, sorry, to 4 or 5 in the afternoon. You're not on, on the weekends, you're not on call, and you have no walkouts. Um, generally, you're going to be looking at vaccinations, flea and worming protocols, different suture materials, uh, neutering procedures, um, and dental charting. Um, Generally, day to day, um, you have um, like clinical exams for the new arrivals, and then you'll have rechecks or re exams throughout the day. Um, you have surgery days, and you rotate around on that. 
Um, the team are super lovely, um, and they like to get you involved in all aspects of every procedure, especially uh, neutering, but the workload can be very variable week to week. Um, they do recommend that you set off slightly earlier to account for rush hour traffic, um, and there's no money towards travel or accommodation, so do be aware of this before you set off. And just on that one, um, be prepared for motorway chaos. I think we got stuck in the car for four and a half hours after one shift, but they were really understanding in the morning and they let us come in a little bit later um, because it's easy to communicate with the rotation leads. So just do that. If you're ever, in, ever unsure on something, just let them know. Um, and I promise we're almost done. We're getting through them all. Um, so this is Acon House. This is uh, a one-week rotation in Bedford. Um, People say it's really good if uh, you really want to focus on your first opinion. Um, I haven't done it personally, but I think you've got it coming up, haven't you, Abby? Um, and yeah, just think about your common first opinion consults, basically. Um, writing, you get to write prescriptions, um, do some surgery. Um, they like you to think about fees and calculating them and some dental radiography as well. Um, but it's really good for kind of structuring in all the, the clinical reasoning and decision making you learn on the course. Um, that's what's great about this is it's kind of like an EMS that's um, been proofed by RVC so it was really really good and they teach you things that are really relevant um, it's quite easy to go by train and then there's accommodation with bedding and all the things you need um, and it's just a nice walk to the to the practice um, so yeah Okay, uh, moving on to the uh, large animal tracks. So we have production medicine, um, which is another two-week rotation. So the first two days are based at Bowens Park Farm, and the rest of the rotation is in Dorset. So you actually stay at Kingston Moorwood again, uh, and you're with Synergy Vets. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, the hours are variable, but not unreasonable. Um, there are weekend shifts involved, but no one call. Um, what to revise? The pre-reading, again, kind of like all your farm rotations, pre-reading is usually essential. Um, and expect sort of lots of farm visits and seminars, um, practical skills as well, sort of sheep bloods, disbloding, mobility scoring, foot trimming. Um, and then you'll be looking at farm reports as well, including data interpretation, communicating with the farmer, talking about sort of responsible antibiotic usage. Um, and you also do a presentation at the end of the rotation as well. Um, so dress code, kind of smart but practical, what you'd usually wear on sort of farm EMS. Uh, so the crit critically a place topic, uh, people says it will find something in week one that you're interested in uh, and do a bit of research on it so that you can present it at the end of the second week. Um, and it's really good for farm practical skills, but it is quite heavily dairy-based. Uh, it's an excellent rotation uh, for budding farm vets. Um, and again, you must have a car to be able to sort of drive between the farms. Um, so yeah, make sure that you've kind of coordinated that with the people that you're doing the rotation with. Uh, next is Torch Vets. Um, so this one is from about half eight to six. Um, it is away from QMH, again, which is super nice, and it's two weeks long. Um, it's very similar to what you would expect kind of farm EMS to be. Um, so it's really hard to predict exactly what to revise as it really is dependent on what season you're going in. Um, there are two seminars over the rotation, um, beef and sheep production systems, um, you have a case prese presentation of your choosing um, and an antibiotic exercise. Um, they send you to a branch that's related to what you're interested in, which is nice. Again, wear smart but practical what you'd wear on EMS. Um, it's a good rotation um, and functions as good EMS, um, where most farmers are receptive to students. Um, only one person going needs a car, um, but it can be... Um, to get you down and drive, um, but cars there are provided. Um, as long as you have a license, um, you'll get out of it what you put in. You need to organize your visits, ideally the day in advance, um, so reception is your friend in this case. Um, there will be quiet times, depending on the time of year, um, but farm work can be sporadic in that sense, so be aware that when you may be going, it might not be as busy as some other people have. Um, but yeah, so there's no requirements for on-call, which is super nice. So next we have Hammonds. Um, people say that it's actually a mix of all three, even though it says large, so you might get some smallies exposure in there. Um, but yeah, it's based in Stableford for two weeks, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., no weekend shifts, um, and there's no on-call, but you can seek it out again if you're really keen and you want to show them that you're interested. Um, 
it's um, you have to drive 25 minutes to get there, um, so you must have a car again. Um, but I believe the rotations have sorted it, so the majority of you have cars where necessary. So um, don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, just treat it again like um, an EMS with your um, dress code and what you would be prepping in advance for that. Um, you join the vets on visits, um, and then you may be given tasks in between, um, and then you do a presentation at the end of the rotation. You may be hearing the word presentation quite a lot, so you are expected to present on a lot of rotations. So just get used to refining your um, presenting skills, um, making your presentation probably the night before. And um, no, I'm joking. And uh, your confidence skills as well, as, like talking in front of these clinicians um, and uh, farmers who are going to be asking you a lot of questions. Um, and yeah, you'll have some equine clientele as well. They're kind of like leisure pet ponies. So um, they, they'll have a lot of uh, conversation with you um, and ask you a lot of questions. So just be prepared for that. Um, but yeah, people say it's a really nice team there and the vets are really, really willing to teach. So you'll probably have a really good time. Uh, okay, and the next one is British Quality Pigs, which I think is quite a new rotation, um, and it's based in Suffolk, another two-week rotation. Hours are half eight to five, but I think people said it can be a bit variable. Um, there's no weekend shifts and no one call. Um, what to revise, kind of anything and everything pigs. Um, so I think we do get quite some, some quite good pig teaching. Um, so definitely go through those lectures and kind of make sure your pig knowledge is up to scratch. Um, expectations, that there'll be like seminars, practical sessions, post-mortems, another abattoir visit, and then again, a presentation at the end um definitely a theme here uh dress code smart but practical um no surprises it's a very pig heavy rotation uh, but people have said you learn a lot in a short space of time the vets are really lovely and they're great at teaching and you come away learning so much about pigs basically um there was a lot of driving involved in this rotation, um, so you definitely need to have a car, but it's a lovely area, um, and you can take time off to explore Norfolk and Suffolk. Um, I don't believe what everyone says, there are cows and sheep in the east, as well as pigs. <laughs> uh, and then someone said, if the weather is nice, Oldenburg and Southwold are lovely beaches. So yeah, if you go kind of in the summer, uh, that might be a nice thing to do on your days off. Next is Coach House. Um, so this is equine and small animal, um, and it's two weeks. So you do one week of small animal and one week of equine. Hours are about 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weekend trips are optional, and on-call is optional as well. Um, generally, what to revise is your kind of general first small animal, first opinion conditions, so like parasites, vaccines, um, and then your common equine conditions. Um, you are on first opinion both weeks. Um, so you're responsible for taking care of the inpatients. Um, there are a bunch of hands-on opportunities, so IV catheters, blood samples, spay and castrations, all that kind of stuff. Um, Transport is pretty inconvenient. Um, you need to take a taxi from the train station, um, so it's better to have a car or book a taxi in advance. Um, and you can order food deliveries from a nearby Tesco, um, so the on-site to the on-site accommodation, so they definitely recommended that. Um, you don't have to stay for the middle weekend, um, but if you do, they may ask you with some help for emergencies. Um, so if you're interested in that, I would say stay that middle weekend, and then you can have that opportunity to get some experience with emergency medicine. So next we have Bell. Um, I would say from what I've heard, I haven't done it, but from um, a lot of my rotation group friends and others on the course, this is a very hour intense rotation. So 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., but you'll also be on weekend shifts. You all work both weekends and you're on call every third night so you probably won't have much time off um, and even then some people only got an hour or two sleep in the night and um, they are understanding of this but again it's very very common it's a very very busy um, equine practice so you'll get a lot of experience and if equine is something you're wanting to do this would be really realistic for say like an internship um, what to revise? Colic. <laughs> a lot of colic. And your basic lameness. And then you'll be doing things very similar to a lot of the equine core here. Um, the morning checks, going through cases. Um, my rotation group friend got to place an NG tube on every four hours for two weeks straight. So she said that was amazing, uh, getting her skills refined. And then when she came on her core again, she was really confident. Um, 
the accommodations in the flats above the practice um, and yeah they provide pretty much everything um, it's not as scary as everyone says so you might hear when you all go on how scary it is but actually it's it's great it's just very intense so just be prepared for that um, and on the nights you do have off um, you can explore a little bit which is nice Uh, and next we have Buckingham, uh, which is based in Milton Keynes, which is another two-week equine rotation. Um, hours half eight to five, but variable, no weekend shifts and kind of limited on call. Um, things to revise, kind of ophthalmology, lameness, gastroscope, eyes and basic nerve blocks, um, kind of all your general sort of uh, equine things. Uh, you go out with the vets to their appointments, um, but obviously it probably depends on the clientele as to how much you get to do. Um, and you'll be responsible for administering out-of-hours treatment as well. Um, somebody said absolutely love their time here the staff are really good at teaching and very student focused um, you get to live on site as well uh, you have your own separate living room and everything uh, and you share a kitchen with the hosts then um, they have two students here at a time uh, and people said at least one car between you is vital um, there's literally no way you can complete this placement without at least one car um, could potentially cycle to the practice uh, but getting to the shops would be hard so yeah um, definitely want to sort of plan in advance Uh, next is equine advanced diagnostic imaging. So this is at the equine referral hospital and it's two weeks long. Um, it's about 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's no weekend shifts and no on call. Um, what to revise is make sure you use LEARN, um, but general anatomy, the location of your pathologies, injection sites for contrast, distal limb ultrasound. Um, you'll be basically helping out with the diagnostic team doing um, radiography, so knowing your positioning and your angles for your distal limb, um, you have the opportunity to take some yourself, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, and you work through your MRI and CT and bone scan images with your radiologist. Um, and some people said that they didn't think they had gained much from it, but when they went back out to EMS and other rotations, they can see that it really helped build up their anatomy knowledge um, and their ability to read radiographs. That's not a skill that you kind of just walk out with without putting a lot of practice in, so it's really great for that. Um, and there's a lot, of, a lot of independent learning. Um, they just went through apparently hundreds of case studies um, and that LEARN has really great resources for you, so definitely take advantage of that. I think we've only got two more, so sit tight. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to quickly add in before I chat about Zoo is you'll be, um, you'd have been listening and figured that there's a lot of transport to a lot of external rotations, and you may think that is quite far and quite costly. The uni's really good at reimbursing you, but do bear in mind that um, if you've got all these rotations back to back, sometimes you could be out of pocket by a few hundred pounds if you've driven to many farms, you've got many trains, um, and if you want to claim that back, sometimes they expect you to submit your claim form before you finish the rotation. So don't leave it until after you've done the rotation you've got home, because you might actually be out of pocket. So think ahead um, and plan ahead your finances as well. Um, but don't worry, they do reimburse you, and it's clear which ones aren't reimbursed. So if you're concerned, you can just chat with the rotation leads. Um, but yeah, we have Zoo, um, a really popular one, very competitive. Um, you're in two separate locations, ZSL and Aspinall, for two weeks. Um, the specifics will have been agreed for everyone. Uh, but around about 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, no weekend shifts are on call, which is always nice. Um, and it's basically um, QMH attire, but the zoo, if they have any particular uniform, they'll let you know. Um, you're going to be wanting to think about your species differences, obviously, so many species, and um, any vaccinations they might get, any legislation, and also how the animal husbandry is really strong on this one because um, that plays a big role in, you know, keeping them healthy um, you'll be doing day-to-day -day clinics with the vets typically they get called out to go to different um, like species and if there's any that need a recheck um, and you'll also present a case at the end that you would have seen uh, people say it's really, really good, um, but again, your experience will be completely different to someone else who did it, um, so it's very variable, so don't compare what someone else did with what you did. Get the most out of it um, and just have a good time, because we all know how hard it can be to get exotics and zoo experience, um, and wear layers, because a lot of the zoo buildings can be quite old and quite cold, so don't underestimate that. And also get your vaccinations early. Um, I didn't do it, so I was looking on Learn last night to do some research, and there's quite a lot on Learn about vaccines, so don't leave that to the last minute either. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you'll have a great time. 
Okay, uh, last one. We've got research, um, which is a six-week track. So obviously you do this instead of any of the other tracks. Um, so it kind of takes place normally over two week, over two uh, rotation blocks, which consists of eight weeks, uh, unless you opt into this, in which case you get a period of 14 weeks, um, and then your word limit goes up to 5,000. Um, so laboratory, you can do sort of lab projects uh, with analytical tests, things like that. Um, there's also the Cornell Leadership Program, um, which you can... Uh, sort of basically choose to take if the research tracking and then uh, you can take six weeks of research EMS as well and that also helps you bump you up to the 14 weeks um, so people have said that it's, it's really nice to have the additional time to develop a good project especially if you're sort of aiming to publish um, and then somebody's also completed the Cornell research project which provided a good into into research careers so if that's you think that's something that you want to go into in the future it's sort of really good for giving you a good insight into kind of the non-clinical side of uh, veterinary so yeah Yeah. <laughs> don't try read all of this <laughs> this is just there for anyone who when we give the slides actually are really interested and want to hear an account of um, the Cornell leadership experience it was a grad from last year um, that she, they did a really good explanation of everything so um, just what we'd add in for you guys lastly just some kind of general rotation tips um, always bring snacks um, you will be surprised how often you miss opening times for Costa and the refractory. So just have snacks on you at all times. Plus sitting in the tea room, you just have nothing to do sometimes and all you want to do is have a snack. So always bring some with you. Um, generally, QMH attire is a smart pair of trousers, your purple scrub top and a shirt underneath. Um, this could be anything from kind of a plain long sleeve to a button down, really whatever you want as long as it looks nice. Um, make sure you wear smart but comfy shoes as well. You will be doing a lot of standing, a lot of walking around, so comfortable shoes are super necessary. Um, Learn it has such amazing resources for you, um, so we definitely recommend go looking at the pages before. Um, they'll have like kind of mock schedules if you don't have anything specific, but there's so many resources. Um, and you'll also be super impressive to all of the nurses and the interns and residents if you actually know everything that's going on with the rotation before you start. Um, ask to do any and all skills you're interested in. The worst they can do is say no to you. Um, if you fail an EDOP, just retake it. Don't let it get you down. Don't worry about it. Um, a lot of students fail the first time because they want you to do it a very specific way. And even if you miss a small step, that means you might not pass. But it's to make sure that you're doing it the best way possible. Um, so don't let it get in your head if you don't pa pass it on your first try. Um, and help the nurses out as much as possible. Um, they are super busy all the time, but the more you get to know them, the more they'll let you help. Um, and if you're around all the time, then you could potentially have more opportunities to do your EDOPS, which is super helpful. Um, for walkouts, work as a team, um, especially when you all have had a long day, you've been there since seven in the morning, um, and you've had a high caseload, it's really important that you guys all work together and make sure that you're all kind of taking an equal load um, across walkouts. Um, but most importantly, enjoy rotations as final years. I can tell you that we've loved it. It's gone way too fast. If I could go back to the beginning, I actually would. Um, it's going to be amazing. And yeah, we just wanted to wish you all um, the best of luck. Um, as Caitlin's just said, it will fly by. I can't believe we've only got probably about five or six weeks um, each left in the QMH. And as I said, you probably will see us about. Um, but you can also come up to us um, and ask us any questions about it. Uh, we're here to help. Um, we put the contacts there for if you have any questions about rotations, because inevitably you will find you do at some point. Um, uh, but do be aware that Dan probably gets 5 billion emails a day, so don't bombard them all. Just think strategically and really go to learn first and do your research on who the rotation lead is first before you just email CC everyone in. Um, but yeah, we know that was quite a lot of information. Does anyone have any questions at all about what it's like to be on rotations? No? <laughs> okay. That'll be a solid one. Like, get out. <laughs> Thank you. You can now do your oath. <laughs> you want <any> questions? <laughs> They're so ready. <laughs> They're like, oh my God. Definitely like
Okay, so uh, I'm just going to um, mention something that is different, and you guys, you probably don't want to hear this. Um, so based on student feedback was the struggle of getting your reimbursements. So, and it's nothing to do with me, it's like finance trying to reimburse it. So what we're doing differently, we're giving lump sums ahead of time to your class. It's the first time it will happen, so it can all go wrong like pizzas. So, but the plan is the amount of support that was claimed by reimbursement is going to be given to each one of you, regardless if you have a car or not. Because what it was unfair was that the drivers that had cars would be driving a lot of people around. And yes, they could claim, but obviously if you're driving three people, four people, they would get a free ride, right? So this way, you can then give your money to the drivers that um, are helping you out. The other change is that when you select a rotations, you mention if you had a car or not, so that when we designed the rotation groups, we made sure that every subgroup had a driver. That's better than previously, where the entire rotation group of eight, no one had a car. So we're trying to respond to sort of suggestions and adjust things. So that would be the one major difference. The other one is that um, that means that when you get your money, you can decide what to do with it. So if you want to get an Uber, you can, but you can't do that for all your rotations. So it is dependent upon you planning your, your travel better, but we're giving that more control to you because sometimes you have a buddy that can drive, you no problem. You save that money and you use it for accommodation if you don't like the accommodation provided. So it is a different system. We're trying to figure out whether it'll be in two installments or three, but then you don't have to get receipts and put a form and send it and somebody has to interpret that and get back to you saying, I can't read what you wrote and it's three months later. So it is an improvement if it works. So it's work in progress. Uh, you guys don't start rotation until uh, mid-March, so hopefully we'll get that sorted before then, and it will work. But it depends on finance, so, you know. I'm still waving to family. Okay. Um, any other major thing? Yeah, so, we, we are, so in terms of how much money you get, it's a, it's a combination of mileage, and sometimes train fares, because it doesn't make sense to calculate mileage to London, because the problem is you have to take a train. So we've taken into account how much we would support in terms of your travel cards to London. So that's, and the figures you will get is slightly different, because core, everyone gets the same amount, but depending on the tracks, you may get more or less, depending on what you chose. So if you chose all small animal tracks, you don't get anything extra besides the core. If you select the tracks that have travel, that have reimbursement, you get more. So if you compare notes, it's because you have different schedules. And we're gonna try to do that somehow, okay? So that's the major thing with uh, the travel woes. Okay, any questions, the guys? The guys been, oh, yeah, there's a question. So the question it relates to the rotations that have weekend duties, it depends a little bit. So some rotations that we can, that we can count as part of your allocation, so you get days off in lieu. So some rotations are good. So if you work the weekend, you get a day off. Other rotations, depending on the intensity of the weekend, you may not get a full day in lieu. So as you were saying, like you never get called in for cardiology, so then I, but the cardiology week is only like three days, isn't it? So it's like a nice break. So you don't get extra that. And there's some rotations where, for example, emergency small animal, it's four shifts over seven days. So you pick three days to be off as long as you cover at least one shift on a weekend. So you get like one weekend and three weekdays, you got your, your rotation covered and you get three days off on that seven days, all right? Other questions? Yeah. There's one place that you said you have to go back to Bristol. So I have to drive to Bristol. You'll have a taxi like come and pick you up. Uh, so you won't have to drive. Those 
people sleep on that journey because it takes 5 a.m. and you're knackered. Uh, so don't worry, they would make you drive to the abattoir, but if anything changes, they'll let you know in advance. Yeah, so transportation is provided for certain group activities, um, and Bristol Abattoir is one of them. They used to, we used to send people to Wales and we stopped that. That was a nightmare. Any other question? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the question about absence, right? It's a common one. If you're ill and you can't make it to the rotation, you contact your rotation leader so that they know what's happened. You don't normally, no, you don't have to make up sick days. So that's an approved absence. We also provide that for bereavement reasons. Someone die, you need to take some time. You can get that without making it up. If you have a personal day request, you may have to make that up. So right now, their class is asking me all the time about job interviews. And my answer is, if you can make it work with your rotation group and leader, they may be able to arrange it so that you can have a day off, but you have to make that up. Because it wasn't an authorized absence, right? But if you have illness, we're not gonna make you uh, make that day up. However, if you miss more than two days, you're gonna have to repeat the whole rotation because of illness, because you didn't get, because it wouldn't be fair for um, you being assessed on like two days out of five, right? So you have up to 25% of like allow absence, so in a one week rotation, you can miss a day. If you have a two week rotation, you miss two days without repeating it. Okay, so that's the difference. I am trying to work on a system where you can apply to take a personal day that's what other vet schools do, and says like you have two extra days to pick, so that could accommodate like job interviews. And this is not about like medical reasons. If you have an appointment, we'll let you go without a problem. But if you like, I like to go to my friend's wedding, and you didn't put that on your request a year ago, that's a personal day. And therefore, they don't have to allow you, but potentially they could. For example, if you're on a rotation where you can schedule a day off during the week, then you can make it work with your group. Okay? Hush. Any other question? All right, you guys excited about the next step here? All right, okay. So we're gonna see if we make this work. Thank you guys. Another round of applause for your final years. Okay, so a little bit of background, all right? Some of you know about the white coat ceremony. Some of you are my new to this, all right? So this is a tradition that started in the US in medical schools, where the day be well, the period before they actually enter their hospital uh, rotations, they will have a ceremony and they always take a pledge. Um, and we sort of transpose that into veterinary medicine. I think dental, dental uh, schools also do this. And it, as you can see, related to being given a white coat. The reason why you don't have white coats is actually time has moved on and we have realized certain things like they're fomites. Because nobody <laughs> likes to wash white thick coats because they take forever to dry. So you'd rather not wash them and take your friends, the bacteria, from rotation to rotation to rotation. So we decided that those are too much of a health risk to your patients, so that's why. We, for a period of time, had short sleeve white coats, because one thing about hand washing, if you are gonna get your sleeves wet, you don't wash it very well. So the reason why they're short sleeve, and the reason why we say bare below the elbow is because then you can wash your hands properly and not worry about getting your sleeves wet. Because it's more important to wash your hands properly and therefore we, we ask that you don't wear long sleeves so that you wash, wash your hands properly, all right? But it was suggested that I should change the name to like purple scrub ceremony. And I'm like, that just would sound nice, 
right? So we kept the name White Coat because of what it symbolizes. It symbolizes your transition, your journey into being a professional. So you're already part of the profession in, in some ways, and this sort of signifies that you're ready for the next step. That somebody will come to you and trust their pet, their animal, to your care. Right? So it is meaningful, and most people enjoy the fact that we recognize that you're now moving forward towards being the independent, multipotent vet. Right? So we ha these words are not sort of set in stone somewhere. These actually were reworked with staff and students of the RBC. So it's actually quite special because these are RBC. So if you find these words, the same words somewhere else, they stole it from us because these, <laughs> this is RVC work and ethos built into this, all right? So it's a pretty nice event. And in, in terms of what happens now, I was gonna ask you to rise and we're gonna recite together. All right, now. The way it works, and most of the time it works really well, is that people know how to recite together. Okay? So it is good for you to pace and you probably take one line at a time so that it all sounds that you're together. Like if this was a concert and you had your phones up and you all be singing together, right? So we're giving you the words, and when I give you the signal, you can take the pledge, all right? And just remember, there's about 400 people watching it live. Um, so make it count. And show yourselves that you can do this together. All right? All right. So one, two, three. Okay. So you can uh, wave to your friends and family. All right. So first of all, I want to thank you for your patience getting the crisis of Pizzagate. Uh, but hopefully most of you have been fed something and I've seen no EpiPens flying, so um, we're good to go. Uh, but it was a pleasure having you guys here with this ceremony. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and if you still have questions, email me. I do take 5,000 emails a day, but I do try to get through them. So take care of yourselves. Enjoy. Oh, one request. Can you 
in a box and, and put it by the, the bin. <laughs> oh.